Right, I'm here at Lingfield after the latest of the very increasingly popular barrier trials and I've got the um, instigators, founders of doing it, um, both Gary Witherford and Craig Witherford and uh, catching up on how they thought today went and um, what's going to come up so sooner or later. Uh, I think they're going really well. You know, they, When we first started this four years ago it was a hard struggle to get maybe 10 or 12, 14 horses but now you know, we, 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 turn, we could have had 120 horses here today and we limited it, limited it to 80 horses and I, I think it works really really well. What's your thinking on it? I mean, I, today especially, I mean, I, we've had a couple of horses here that were previously a problem on the track. Um, I, there was one that I loaded at Haydock, um, which I was very shocked actually I got in that day. Um, so it was ideal for him to come here so I can do a little bit of schooling with him, you know, in race conditions so that the next time he does run, you know, we shouldn't have any problems. And, I do, I'm a strong believer in the same with Dad, that a, a race, any sort of race, is won and lost at, you know, at the stalls. So. It's most important, I think, for start is for any horses, they have to be relaxed and relaxed into the gate before they jump. You know, if you've got a horse that's wound up at the start, he's not, he's not going to run his best race. You know, you've got to, you've got to be trained and, and, and relaxed at the gate, ready to jump. And most you had mostly two-year-olds today, and sort of having watched them down at the start, it was interesting, sort of like you do. Just talk us through the sort of um, the procedure you go, because I didn't realise before that you let them go for a furlong and then they canter back and go in again. Um, just talk us through the sort of rationale and the reason for doing that. Yeah, I mean it's something when we first were doing the barrier trials when we first started four years ago. But I found that you get a lot of these horses will just run away with you and they're on the steel straight away, and, and you find that if you jumped them once and just went to the corner, they actually drop the bridle instead of just wanting to rush and, and, and get onto the bitter straight away. So it seemed to work that just jumping them out, go to the corner and bring them back and put them in again. And I think with the young horses, we had, it's probably, we probably had 15, 16 older horses, but the rest were two year olds, first timers. They were, they, as you saw yourself, you know, the first time you get, you can have a little problem with them going in a bit scared and a bit sort of like, trying to pick them up and, and, and lift them into the gates but um, after they went in the first time went to the corner come back they walked in the second time it's just educational as well and there was only two handlers today uh, as in putting horses and pushers what they call pushers but you know, I, I use the tappers a lot where it encourages the horses to walk forward with just with a little bit of pressure on the, on the, on the back of the legs with a little touch and they go forward. Yeah, it was interesting to see the tappers. I mean, it's something that obviously isn't allowed on a race course. Um, so then there's been quite a bit of press over the last couple of years with people throwing water, sand, everything yeah. else at a horse, um, causing a little bit of an uproar. But uh, the tappers certainly showed they worked um, this morning. So um, any sort of thoughts on you know what the BHA might do with that? Um, I mean, I can see, I can see how it, it comes across that it, you know it's a you know it's a stick but it's not I mean it's being used as a tapper literally just to tap the horse on the hocks to encourage the horse to go forward once the horse is going forward you, you, you know you, you're not hitting the horse you I mean I'd rather see that than seeing six eight people lifting a horse up with a jockey with his tail lifted and a blind and a blind and, a, and uh, you know sort of not just not the, doing the job properly it's and when you see a horse going in very easy, safe though, it's very safe and, and I brought it up you know many years ago when I saw somebody get kicked in the in, in, the, in the stomach and he died you know he died uh, from pushing the horse from behind and he just lashed out and caught him in the spleen and he bled it bled out in front of me um, and for the health and safety matter I'm sure it's a better way of doing anything you know and it works it's proven it works you, what, you know, yeah, you... definitely. I mean, obviously, I've grown up with using tappers since you know a young age, and that's the only real way that I've you know been taught to do that way. So, to actually for me to actually put myself in a, a pushing situation, I do feel vulnerable. You know, you give me a tapper, and I'm a meter and a half away from that horse. I'm out of their kicking zone. You know, where they can actually catch me. So it is, you know. A, a much safer option to use. You know, if you, you know, you saw today a couple of ones were lashing out, and you know, if you go behind them, you're, you're putting yourself in a one one kick of them, you're broke a leg. You know, you're 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 you know you're you're off for six or eight weeks. You know, there's there's no missing them with them either, and especially the two-year-olds. You know. And so, to the future, what um, what more barrier trials can we expect, and, and uh, when would they be? 
I, I mean, Craig will know that Dakes is better with Dakes than me. I'm getting a bit old now, but um, but we're trying to bring them in every fortnight at least. But between Lingfield and Wolverhampton, I'd like to get Chelmsford on board, and I'd like to get you know, Newcastle on board um, for the for the um, the northern trainers. It's you know, it's got to be a dis you know a disadvantage to them for not having experienced what the southern horses are getting anyway. But, uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's been a long slog, and you know we're, we're slowly getting there, and you know we've got Wolverhampton on board now as well. I mean, I've had a couple of the northern trainers even come to me and say, you know, they've got to a point where they're looking at entries to see whether, if how many of the southern trainers have got entries up north and whether they should run their horse, you know, up north where they are because they know they've been to they, barrier trials. To barrier trials, and they I wouldn't say they're one step ahead. Realistically, they are. Well, they are. They're one um, run ahead. You know, but they've they've just got that experience on the track, so that, that two-year-old's not going to boil over. You know, when they get to the races around the paddock or the stalls, um, so they are like you know they are a stride behind. So ideally, if Newcastle or you know any other Northern tracks got on board to help you know help those guys out.